So sunlight to electricity. The photovoltaic effect does it without moving parts, without a chemical effect, and without the need for heat. Now there will be heat generated because it's unfortunately the byproduct. It's the waste that happens in a conversion process. But it doesn't require heat, it doesn't require chemistry, it doesn't require moving parts. And that's why PV panels have this long life, because there's less to actually degrade compared with usual batteries or photochemical effects or photoelectrochemical effects. There's no chemical degradation. So here we are. I've summarised it by saying these are the three steps, and you could say four, but it's three steps. And I've taken this cross-section, which comes from the Murdoch University of Australia website, because it's a nice picture and it saves me drawing a new one, but you'll see lots of similar pictures. So here's a typical photovoltaic panel with a slice of material that we'll come to in a minute, an electrical contact on the top which is gridded to let the light through, and on the back surface a complete opaque contact, which isn't shown well on this picture. Here's a cross-section of what it looks like with some of the explanation of what's going on. On the right-hand side, you'll see that the effect is basically that light is absorbed to produce electrical charge. That's the basic photovoltaic effect. If we did nothing else, then that would happen anyway. So I'll pass round a piece of silicon so you can see what the stuff looks like. It's, don't, I mean, don't lick it, it's not toxic though. But <laughs> That's a lump of silicon. You'll see it looks vaguely metallic, but it isn't a metal, it's a semiconductor. It's not a full conductor. So what you're doing is taking this material, and while that piece is being handed around, it's absorbing light from the rooms, and it's generating electrical charges. And its resistance will change. But that's not the photovoltaic effect, that's just photoconductivity. And lots of materials do that. The secret to having a photovoltaic effect is that you separate those charges by a built-in electrical field. If you don't separate the charges, they rapidly meet each other, recombine, and you're back to where you started. So sunlight generates a pair of positive and negative charges. You can't generate just one charge without having the other. They're always generated together. And if you have a positive charge and a negative charge, and they're close together, then they'll meet, recombine, and the energy will come out again. In LEDs, it comes out as light. But in silicon, it comes out as heat. The nature of the material is that it's difficult to get it to emit light. So, we produce charges. Now, we then have this separation, and it's the separation that produces a voltage that we can measure across one of the panels. The charges themselves are the current that is then flowing. So when we talk about electrical current, it's a flow of charge. Okay? So not doped, is it? it probably is, uh, because it's, most silicon is doped with boron or phosphorus anyway, because most manufacturers want it partially doped. Yes. But it will be a very small part, and the doped material looks the same as the undoped, so it has that metallic appearance. So we generate pairs of charges which don't go anywhere, but as soon as you apply the field that's built into them, then the charges will flow and you've got a current and a voltage. And we need both to do anything useful. So we need the contacts on the cell to pass the charges into the load, and that produces power. And current times voltage is power. <coughs> 